Hello and good morning to our listeners from around the world. My name is Brian Wesley Johnson and welcome again to another edition of This Morning with Solivity. I'm so glad that you're here with us uh, because I have two very special people to me, very special friends and co-hosts, Candace Harper and Tammy Gaines with me. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, good morning. Oh man, so much to talk about. But before we get started, I want to once again remind our listeners out in the universe to ask questions, comment, um, you know, post right directly to our YouTube chat and Facebook chat because we want to hear what you think about what we're talking about today. Um, this is an interactive discussion, and these are real conversations that we want to empower you every single day. So why don't we get started? Um, ladies, last night I was getting the latest on the encounter with Memphis police and Tyree Nichols. I'm sure that you are both familiar with that case, correct? Yeah. 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 Um, uh, why don't I start? I want to, we, we can dive into this because I really want to talk about this this morning with you. Um, I want to first kind of give out some factual information to people so that they understand what's going on, what's this about, um, and then they can join in as well with their own thoughts and feelings. So uh, Tyree Nichols, a 29-year-old black man, died January 10th, several days after an encounter with Memphis, Tennessee police officers during a routine traffic stop near his mother's house. According to Nichols' family and their attorneys, an independent autopsy revealed that he had suffered extensive bleeding caused by a severe beating and that he died from that, um, from that trauma. Uh, the five officers involved were fired for their actions. Now, the latest news is that these officers are now indicted on charges, including murder and kidnapping, filed by the Shelby County District Attorney. Now, investigations by state and federal author authorities is still ongoing. And additionally, uh, today, actually on Friday, January 27th, there, the video of the incident will be released uh, by the city. Um, it is stated that the video itself is horrific. Um, and this was stated by the current Memphis police chief. Um, woo! Yeah. I got feels for this, y'all. I got feels for this. Um, the officers in question were all black. Just want to put that out there. The the person who died was black. And I, you know, Tammy, I know this is something that you wanted to talk about today, and I was totally down for it because I had my own thoughts and feelings about it. But I'll go to both of you first. Just your your reaction this week. Uh, um. I guess I, I guess I had a couple of reactions and then I had some self-awareness last night. Mm -hmm. So obviously when we hear this, I'll, let me speak for myself. When I heard this, I was like, not again, like not another right. young right. black man struck right. down in the prime of his life. I believe he had just moved to Memphis to start yes. like a new life. Yes. And this is so tragic. It's just, it's tragic on so many levels. Um, but you know, I have sons and I have brothers, I have a dad, mm -hmm. I have uncles. Like mm -hmm. every time I hear this, I get a little bit, I just get a moment of panic and it's right. a shame. I taught my son when he was, you know, he got, I took him to get his license on the way home. I was like, listen, if you ever get pulled over, yes, sir. No, sir. Mm -hmm. If they, t you know, if they, if they tell you to get out the car, start, like start the video rolling. Like, what kind of world do we live in now that, thank God, everybody has cell phones with cameras so you could videotape? Right. Uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, when I heard – and I heard the news, I did – I called my son because I just wanted to hear his voice. Um, but there was a part of me also that was a little bit numb. Mm -hmm. And, I, I like, yes, last night I was like, am I becoming desensitized to this because it happens so frequently? Right. And it happens and nothing changes. Yeah. So right. I was, I definitely had a moment of like, what's wrong with me? Like I should be more upset about this, mm -hmm. but there's a part mm -hmm. of me that's like socially exhausted. Wow. Like how many people have to get killed at the hands of cops for something to change? Yeah. Right. Like, even if you think about George Floyd, all those protests painting the street down to Washington, DC, black lives matters. 
nothing changed. Right. Right. Not a thing. All right. those people around the world that gave their voice to support, you know, George Floyd and, and his family and what happened, not a single thing changed. So, yeah, I think I'm a little bit socially exhausted. I got whiplash. I have whiplash. Wow. Yeah. Yes. What about you? Um. Yeah, I mean, because I think it's it's twofold. So, you know, you think about personally, you know, I have six nephews who are, you know, amazing uh, young men of color who are up to great things and all have good hearts and are, are contributions to society. And I think about if anything like this were to happen to them, how I would just be ready to just fight. Like I would be ready right. to kill somebody, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. right? And those are my nephews. Those aren't, those aren't even my direct children, but, you know, I, I, by proxy. There's that part of it and then the other part of it is you know that that overwhelming sense that we live in a country that was uh predicated and built on supremacy and violence and that all of this is just the aftermath of it and you know i like in the grand scheme of things like you wonder if it's ever going to um evolve or, mm -hmm. or, or uh, if it's ever going to have any sort of um, uh, uh, conscious awakening, like, like, a, like a complete conscious awakening, or if this is just part of our human experience. And if it is, you know, just how do we navigate life? <laughs> right. You know, because right. I don't, and just you know, like the the kind of uh, resolution where it's like, oh, it it is what it is, and like Tammy said, you know, that's that's kind of the way things never change. You know, it mm -hmm. just feels like it never changes. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I struggle with this, and I'm such a Pollyanna, I'm such a silver lining girl. So when things like this happen, I struggle with this idea of like, is this just part of the human existence? This violence that occurs, this racism, the hatred, the, you know, living in a place where, although there's a, there's a lot of freedoms afforded to us that aren't in other countries, still we're, we're living in a country that was built on, you know, racial injustice, violence, supremacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, so why are we surprised? <laughs> yeah, well, not just surprised, but, but, you know, how do we resolve it within ourselves without being, um, uh, you know, without just throwing our hands up? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It's that line to walk. And I don't even know what it means to walk that line, but that's what comes up for me when stuff like this happens. Like, yeah. Like how do we be with it? And then, and then also, un you know, understand that it's not okay. <laughs> right. You know, I want to dig a little bit deeper into that part of it, Candace and yeah. Tammy, which is because I think that we don't, talk about what that is that we don't want to deal with right it's 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 more than than this one incident right it's the ongoing onslaught and the emotional trauma and re-trauma and re-trauma and over and over and over again that those of us specifically in the black community feel when these encounters end with another son, daughter, father, mother, you know, ends up in ends up in death. Yeah. So, you know, I just want to, you know, it's 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 a unique experience and it's a historic experience. And from my point of view, you know, I totally get it. Like when this, when I heard about this this week, there's a part of me that just wanted to just tune it out for a minute. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, because it's just too much. It's like it's too much. It's too it's much. A it's a lot. But you mentioned something, uh, which I think is so interesting, which is the historical perspective around this yes. and this trauma. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you heard, but in Spain yesterday, they hung 
a black soccer player in effigy off of one of their biggest bridge bridges in the middle of the city. No, I did not hear that. Crazy. So that like just hearing that, I was like, what? Yeah. They still do that. And then I thought about from a historical standpoint, I was watching this um, movie on Netflix. I think it's called Mudbound. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, back in the day when they were hanging black men, in some cases, black women and kids like from trees Mm -hmm. and people would be, you know, people are walking down the path because they have to get somewhere and they see bodies hanging from the trees. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think about what was happening, like who loved those bodies that were hanging from the tree. Yeah. Uh, Um, Yeah. And at some point do you just become, do you become numb because this is the norm? Like you stop being outraged. Like, I mean, already they were already slaves. So, you, you know, you already had suppressed emotions as it is. Um, But I don't know, Candace, you said, by the way, whether it's your nephews or your sons, it doesn't matter. Like you are going to want to fight somebody. Right. If that's someone in your family, <laughs> right. like someone's going down. I'm not yeah. waiting for justice. I'm going to take it into my own hands mm-hmm. and my kids can visit me in jail right? behind, a, <laughs> behind a good cause. Um, yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, when I think about like, you know, this has been trauma for us for so many generations. Mm. And on some level, I am disappointed and I'm a little bit dejected. Like they're going to protest in Memphis tonight. What's going to change? Yeah. Like I am generally, my personality is like, I take action, like be proactive and nothing seems to be working. Yeah. Mm. Nothing seems to be working. Mm. I wonder too, though, like, you know, we were talking about how, you know, this, there's no way to get around that it is a racial issue. Yeah. Right. And, you know, even though the the police officers are black, that I wonder, and here I go being Pollyanna, silver lining girl, like, I, Mm -hmm. I wonder if because this situation is, um, you know, different than what we're used to, because usually it's white police officers. <laughs> right. And right. I wonder I wonder if, you know, part of what might may, might have people have a deeper understanding that this is this is a police brutality issue mm-hmm. is that mm-hmm. it has to do with how we prop up these young men who become police and how we train them, how we, um, you know, uh, uh, set up the police structure in this country, knowing that you know the police structure started from uh, uh, slave mm-hmm. roots, right? Yep. So even though they were black officers, the, the, our police structure has supremacy at its base because it was all about you know wrangling slaves and chasing slaves, and you yep. know that's that's where our police you know uh, originated from. So whether they're black or not. The issue is our policing in this country is broken. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and just the fact that anyone, no matter what color they are, can be in a in a uniform and have a weapon and feel like it is in any way okay, especially a number of police officers. So what we find even with the George Floyd case, there were you know, people who were complicit mm-hmm. and also there were police officers that were complicit and, and also involved. So it's like a fa- the fact that a number of them can get together, no matter what color they are, and feel like this is OK. I think that this truly speaks to that it is a police brutality problem first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even, right. And even though I think, you know, racism is at the forefront and that's that's a problem that this country has. I think that it, that it really has to start with the police, right? In general, no matter what color they are, how they're being trained, and you know what biases are being set up in their minds. Because we know just because of colorism that even as black folks, biases can be set up in our minds. Right. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned to you guys, but my brother is a police officer. Yeah, um, and he came out of the academy. Uh, he graduated in May and then September September 11th happened. 
So most of the, he was in Baltimore. Most of the Baltimore police got called up to New York and he literally was like left to his own devices as were the rest of the newly graduated cadets. They didn't get partners. They didn't get trained. They were riding around alone for the first time. Um, And, you know, my brother, he he has a unique perspective. I've talked, I haven't talked to him about like this most recent incident, Um, but his perspective, first of all, he's an outstanding police officer. And we've talked over the years. He just retired last year, by the way. So this is like 25 years of being a police officer. He said, you know, Tammy, 80% of cops are good. Yeah. Like they're in this position for the right reason. Like they, they became police officers for the right reason. They wanted to be of service. Most of them become police officers and go back to their community, like where mm-hmm. they grew up. Yeah. And then he said, you know, another 10% have some cons- you know they're concerning some of their behaviors concerning yeah and then there's 10 percent that are flat out like how did they even how are they even on the police force they're so emotionally damaged they're constantly getting reprimanded yeah um so you know it's interesting like i heard somebody say yesterday like you know f the police mm. and this <laughs> this whole defund the police thing i i was like what yeah right like right. that is so ridiculous. Like I'm not mad at the police. Yeah. Right. You know, they they protect us, they honor us. Like my son, I've had to call nine one one many times and they're here and they're present and what can we do? Um, so I'm not mad at the police. I'm mad at the system that is allowing yes. the police right. to keep doing this over and over again. Yeah, absolutely. And no absolutely. amount of training, you know, I, I teach about emotional <laughs> intelligence. Yeah. I don't care how much you train somebody on like the tactics yeah. and on de-escalation. Right. Um, if you don't have emotional intelligence to start with, like a high EQ. Yes. Yeah. No amount there you of go. Training is going to help. Like at the, at the, at the core, you are who you are and you think how you think. Yeah. You can't, you can't train racist thoughts out of somebody's head. No. Right. No. Right. You can't train brutality out of somebody's head. Like at some point, like, you know, they have to be individually accountable for what they do. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm mad at. Like, why are these guys like, has this happened before, by the way, these five cops, have they ever done this to anybody else before? And they're still on the force. There was an article I was reading that a couple of them, I think they have had some issues, like ongoing right. issues with, with some brutality and, and, you know, stepping over the line. Right. So that's what I'm mad at, Candace, which is yeah. like, why, why are they still there? Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I totally agree with that. I hear that. And and maybe, you know, we talk about defund the police, but maybe it's fund the police with emotional intelligence training. Yes. Fund right? the police. What? Okay. <laughs> like get some training in there that, that is actually, you know, a, a psych, psychology, uh, intellect, emotion based so that they For can therapy. How about yeah. just give them therapy? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. No, I absolutely. like that. And the thing is, is that, you know, I I believe that that's true probably for most industries, but because they're in Mm -hmm. such a, a, and you know, this could, any first responders, this could apply to, right? Because it's constant trauma that they deal with. Mm -hmm. It's constant trauma. Like you're getting called at any moment, you're going to see a dead body. At any moment, you're going to meet a a rape victim. At any moment, there's going to be a a house burning down, you know? So why wouldn't there be a full structure set up for their care psychologically and emotionally. <laughs> Absolutely. Ooh. Maybe we and just why, solved the problem. Right? No, right? Why is there still stigma around it? Why is there still this thing where, you know, they're they're a little bit afraid to say that they had to go see a therapist or that they mm-hmm. had to, you know, get psychological help? Well, why does whole... that even still exist anywhere, right? Well, that's yeah, all that I like that thread. Break, but I, I want to yeah. when we come back, Brian, I've I, I want to just want to talk about this topic a little bit longer. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. I think we just pulled something that I think we ne- really need to talk more about. So we're going to stay on this topic, everybody. Um, we're going to take a quick, quick, real short break. And we'll be back with more this morning with Solidity. We'll be back in about 30 seconds this time. Mm-hmm. Six years ago, when I started Solidity, my vision was to support everyone in improving their life through the discovery of their passion and purpose, so they could become the best version of themselves. To battle fear and ignorance, 
and create a better world today. Get inspired to live your passion and purpose. Visit Solivity.com now. And good morning. This is Brian Wesley Johnson, and welcome back to This Morning with Solivity with my very special friends and co-hosts, Candace Harper and Tammy Gaines. Hey, ladies. Hey. Hey. We, hey. Yeah, we're talking <laughs> about uh, the latest um, incident with police that ended with the death of Tyree Nichols in Memphis, Tennessee. And we're talking about um, uh, the fact that I think we all kind of agree that we understand that the majority of police are okay, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that they have good intentions, that they're out to serve and protect, um, mm -hmm. and that there are a minority of police officers that continue a history of quote unquote modern policing that has been problematic to say the least. Yeah. Um, I just want to kind of bring up some quick facts as we move into this next round. So um, policing in America really started during the colonial period. And again, like most, <laughs> like even more modern day police uh, systems in, in cities and states and, and counties, a lot of these folks were like just off the street. I mean, they were untrained. They were volunteers. They were elected by like the local public uh, mm -hmm. and that they, there wasn't like this real rigorous uh, selection process yeah. or, or, um, or there could be bias based upon the, the who was voting for these people to be put in, in power. And that continued all the way until, you know, even uh, more modern times, 18th and 19th centuries. Uh, Candace, you brought about the, the whole thing around the night watch patrols, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, where they go out and get slaves and bring them back. Um, the Wild West that a lot of people don't talk about, about the locally appointed sheriffs and deputies and militias and all that. I mean, all that's part of the history of modern policing. Mm -hmm. And though um, some things have gotten better, some things have gotten worse because of the things that we were talking about in the last segment, which is where's the real emotional and psychological support for the police officers that are that are serving and protecting us every single day. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're seeing hor horrors and stuff that none of us could ever imagine that we would see. And I would also say, where's the more rigorous selection process about who becomes a police officer in a local community? You know, you so know, Brian, to, to just bring some levity to this, immediately what pops into my mind is like blazing saddles. Oh, some yeah. Of these, <laughs> some of these <laughs> other... Like some of these other spoofs, yes. like you know, it's like grab your rifles, boys. Yeah, right. We want to get it. Let's get together and get us a, you know. Yep. <laughs> exactly. So when I think about the early, you know, militia, the yeah. people that like are the foundation of our police force today, it was like who has a rifle in time. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, um, <laughs> right. But to your um, to circle back to this conversation around. Um, psychological support uh there is none yeah, exactly so when i i remember when my brother first he shot somebody he mm. like i don't know if you guys mm. have seen the wire but that was him like he was the wire Ooh. undercover oh, drug oh. detective oh. you know chasing perps across roofs in baltimore jumping oh, wow. from building to building yeah um and i remember i was home so i live here in jersey and he's in baltimore I was making dinner and the doorbell rings and it was him. Mm. And I was like, what are you doing? Oh my God, what are you doing here? He's like, I needed to talk. So wow. he came in and he said, look, my, my man had to drive three and a half hours to wow. talk to someone he trusted that he could like let these feelings go. And he said like he had just shot his first perp. Like I'm not, listen, y'all, you know me. I'm not a trained therapist. Right. I don't have right. any formal right. training. I'm, I'm not a police officer. I'm assuming like, they have, you know, people that specialize in like what they see. Yeah. But he literally yeah. just wanted to talk. He he 
he told me the whole thing what happened like i felt so um my heart was breaking for him because he was so upset but at the end of the day i was like did he deserve it mm. you know he's like yeah he had his gun pointed at me wow so i was like you know kill or be killed this is the line of work you're in but right. that always stayed with me that he had no place to go like he couldn't yeah. there was nobody that he could talk to in baltimore yeah. so he drove to new jersey to talk to his sister wow yeah so i, mean, I do th volumes. it does speak volumes so that's why i said like maybe we just solved the problem it's about like raising police officers and those that manage them and oversee them raising their emotional intelligence so that they think as a human because what we're going to see on this video tonight is oh. a complete lack of humanity yeah. Police yeah. officer, stranger on the street, like right. you would never stand by and, and let that happen. No. Right. Like what happened to their humanity? Maybe well, it's gone because they have no no EQ. Well, again, part of this whole thing is is that especially over the last, you know, two or three decades, there's been a militarization of the police, right? Mm -hmm. Where even little small town police, you know, systems were able to get military hardware or military style hardware. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know of a police uh, district now that doesn't have a quick reaction force. I mean, they had the quick reaction force in Uvalde. Well, they didn't do anything, but uh, you know, that was a mess. Let's not hold that up as yeah. any sort of good yeah. response. <clears throat> right. Um, which is, a, but what well, that's, but again, in the midst of all this, that's a piece of it, right? Because, yeah. because you were talking about that, where is their humanity? Where's the training about the humanistic part of being in law enforcement? Mm -hmm. And, you know, their job was to rush in and save those children. Yeah. And they didn't do it. Yeah, right? that, that, that actually, I actually cried over that yeah. story. Those right. are children that are scared. Right. Where is right. your humanity? That could have been your kid in there. Right. And again, in this in this instance with Tyree Nichols, where was the humanity? I mean, it it's it's a cycle of and I and I and I you know bias is for me is too soft of a word. Um, um, I think it includes, um inbred racism not necessarily from race to race but police to race how police are trained to react to certain races of people mm -hmm. and the humanity that that the police saw in that young man at 29 was non-existent they did not see him as a human being they only saw him as a threat that needed to be beat and exterminated. Mm. But why? Exactly. Yeah. Um, exactly. Well, I mean, it definitely goes back, not to interrupt you, Tammy, it definitely goes back to, you know, when we can't, uh, you know, I'm a big believer in, in, you know, how do you mitigate even just the smallest of, of conflicts or issues with other people. It's like, you know, that willingness to be able to see, you know, God, universe, life energy, love energy, whatever you want to call it, a source of, of love, a higher power within another person. Like we, you know, be, to be able to value another person when you look at them, it has to start with yourself. It has to come from within. And, you know, Tammy, you said the thing about the Evaldi cops, uh, lacking humanity and not being able to go in and save children. But, you know, they're, they were standing out there as children who were scared and that's not defending mm. what they did. Right. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's, that's good. That's, nice. that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. that's good. Right. That's yeah. what we all are. We are children who are scared. And, and when we don't actually let ourselves see each other that way, and there's a lot of things that teach us not to, right. You know, it's, uh, particularly just in our American culture, because I think that the the violence in this culture is not specific to any race. Right. But um, you know, it's it's that willingness to look at another another person and be able to see God energy, love energy. But we have to be able to start with ourselves. And when we don't have that, 
it it's a, a, like you said, a lack of humanity or just an inability to do the thing that would actually uh, advance rather than, than destroy. You know, I love this. I love this new thread that we're pulling because the first thought that came in my mind was while, while we're focusing on this being a policing thing, it's really at a higher level, a hum a humanity thing, a mm -hmm. spiritual thing where we all see each other, right? Mm -hmm. Growing up in Detroit, Detroit was named every year the murder capital of the United States, mm -hmm. right? And people who lived there with me during my development years as a, as a young adult and then adult, we all knew what we Detroit was and Detroit was a city that in many ways was, you know, oppressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, things like people don't even understand. Like when I was a kid, there were resources within the city that you could count on, including things like grocery stores, as simple as a grocery store that was nearby or hardware stores or that kind of thing. Later in, I think in the in the late 80s, 90s, there wasn't a single major food chain in the city. Even though there was even though there was a economic reason for it to be there. Yeah. So people who get oppressed get pissed. And they go into more of a survival kind of mode. And so are we seeing seeing those people are we supporting those people are we making it a political wedge right and mm -hmm. blaming people for for race instead of actually just seeing them as human beings and needing support and love and acknowledgement and validation yeah i mean this is this it's got to stop i mean i you know oh, i saw hard. um i took I took my daughter to see Avatar, mm, you know, mm. which we saw. I, I forgot how old that movie is, like 20 years old. Yeah. Almost. Um, and I saw it 20 years ago. Um, and I was like, all right, like, this is a good movie. Like, he did a good mm. job. It's it's entertaining. It's engaging. Mm. And then they re-released it for one day in November. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I w we went to go see it. I got I have goosebumps right now. <laughs> that movie was ahead of its time. Yes. Like yeah. 20 years ago, I did not receive the message. Right. Yeah. Um, because all of this wasn't going on. Like all of this police brutality and war, like a lot of this wasn't going on 20 years ago. Anyway, when I saw it in November, I literally was feverishly taking notes during the movie because the fundamental message is I see you. I see you. Yeah. I see you for who you are. You are, period. I see you for how you are. I see right. all aspects of you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we went and saw the second one like in December, and I was like, this is so deep. I just feel like they should make it free. Because if, <laughs> if, if everybody went to go see like this free avatar, they might actually be like, Wow. Yeah. That whole movie is is about like your core of love. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and our potential to love <clears throat> and our ability to allow ourselves to be loved. Um, so, you know, to when we, again, when we come back to this like latest incidents of police beating somebody to death, um, I just wonder, well, remember I said earlier, like mm -hmm. nothing changed. Yeah. Um, I just not to listen. I am a glass half full person. Like mm -hmm. Candy, you don't know me as well as like Brian does, but there's always a bright side. We could always figure something out. Yeah. yeah. This this yeah. one, <clears throat> I'm not optimistic. No. Because it requires people to take a hard look at themselves, and most people aren't willing to do that. Yeah. It's too scary. I yeah, and and I agree with that. It is a very very scary thing, but I also think that the biggest, most uh, revolutionary changes come from the worst circumstances 
And so, you know, for me, and that's probably why we gel, Tammy, because I'm I'm silver lining girl too. I'm like, <laughs> there's always got to be a good way. There's but something for, good about this. Yeah, it burned down, but at least our dinner's cooked. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Like there's, there's always something to outside. <laughs> we can rebuild. We don't have to. Go. We can, yeah, we're good. We're good. There's Get that chicken. <laughs> There's always something to alchemize out of it. And I and I and I think that, you know, like I was saying before, like I think because um, you know, we have a situation here where everyone was black, I think that is what is there for all of us to be able to see is that this this is like we were talking about earlier, a deeper a, emotional psychological issue and and this conversation about being able to see each other's humanity and see each other like in the avatar movie i think that it it leaves spaces and openings for people to to stop stigmatizing um the idea of just you know loving yourself getting the help you need asking for support not feeling like you know you're you're on your own and trying to figure out and navigate other people and relationships and life in general like you know so many so many of us are so stuck in you know I'm on my own trying to survive in a place w- that doesn't want me to survive I had a young black man send me a DM on my business page the other day and he was kind of half hitting on me but, <laughs> but <laughs> like reaching out for help. And what I often do, because it it happens occasionally, where I'll have like a young black man, let's say in his 20s or 30s, and you know, mama still got it. So they think I'm younger than I am, but they, you know, they'll hit on me, but also part of them wants some sort of support and help. And when I responded to him, I responded to him in love. Like, obviously I'm not available. However, if you have a question about relationships, and he ended up opening up to me saying that sometimes he doesn't want to live. Wow. Right. So that opened up a conversation where I could I could give him some support around that. And I think, you know, that's where we need to get to. We need to stop minimizing and stigmatizing what it means to talk about, you know, love and loving yourself and, and quit treating it like it's just for children or that's just hearts and flowers. Because there are men and women out here who are in these jobs. There are men and women out here who are just you know, carrying around (laughs) and no one ever said to them, you are valuable and important. And they had no source of, I am valuable and important that I am of source energy. I am of God. And as soon as I start to understand that and believe that, then I get to express my humanity. Like it all comes down to that. And so I think that when something like this so major happens, it opens up an opportunity for us to have like this conversation we're having now. And it also puts people who are, are usually unconscious. It, it, you know, puts something in front of them so that consciousness can be uh, uh, something that they, they seek. Even if I'm completely unconscious walking around, something horrible happens in front of me and I have an opportunity to say, you know, God help, or what can I do? Where can I go? Who can I talk to? Everyone won't necessarily heed that call, Mm -hmm. but without these kinds of occurrences, there'd be no reason to seek out love. There'd be no reason to seek out support. Wow. I love this thread too, because I think (laughs) that, that, you know, my grandparents used to talk to me all the time. I'm sure you guys have heard this, you know, you know, God never just knocks you down. Yeah. He, you know, he, you know, says a little whisper and then he taps you on the shoulder and then he, you know, gets a little louder <laughs> and then start, then he shakes you a little bit and then he knocks you down. Right. Yeah. And I think that our country specifically has been, you know, wanting to move in a certain direction where those things become the norm that you were talking about, Candace, where we see each other, mm. where where this whole machismo, masculine individualist, you know, individualism survival. Of, of survival that you can't, you know, you you know, you're not worth it unless you show that you've done it on your own, which is a complete myth, by the way. Nobody ever does it alone. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 
um, that if you don't do if you if you don't do that, you're worthless, yeah. right? And that you're weak, right? And that has to change. That yeah. literally has to change. And I think you're right. I think that this is what this is all about. Listen, we're going to take a quick break. Um, I want to keep on this. Um, but I, I, but I think what I want to do is, I mean, Candace, you talked some, about earlier, we were offline talking about, you know, what are some of the ways that we can deal with this? Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the ways that we can support our communities um, in dealing with this and moving forward? So why don't we talk about that um, in the next segment? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. yeah. So we'll be right back in about 60 seconds, everybody. Find all the Satana products at our Go Shop on Solivity at go.solivity.com now. Shop for beauty products, skin care, hair care. It is all there at the Go Shop. Go Shop Solivity. Hey, we want to remind you that coming up at 12 noon today is another great episode with Solivity TV host D'Angelo Thompson with Gratitude is a Journey. And this week he is joined by hair and makeup, phenomenal art, makeup artist, Angela Lynn Ware. Um, I cannot wait for this. Um, watch Gratitude is a Journey every Friday at 12 noon with a replay at 7 p.m. You can join D'Angelo as he explores the unseen and seen blessings of gratitude every week. Yay, D'Angelo. <laughs> yeah. He's so down Oh my God. He, he, and he makes it look so easy too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He and I actually met working together, Tammy. We worked on the Wendy Williams show. Are you serious? Makeup. Yeah. I was the art director and he was the makeup artist and you know, we just gelled right away. He's, I love him. Oh, that's amazing. Where, where is, I can't wait to meet everybody in person. Right. Right? <laughs> we can figure that out. <laughs> so everybody, we were talking about the, the tragedy of Tyree Nichols in Memphis. And, you know, we all had our feelings about it. I think, I think the feelings ranged from rage to um, depression to um, shock, um, anxiety. I mean, it, th when these things happen, I think people across the spectrum, specifically in the black community, but I also think across America because it's on national news, right? And international news. I was watching BBC to, uh, yesterday and they were covering this story. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to kind of turn to make sure that our listeners get something. Um, I, I won't, I, I'll say that it's positive, but I'll say that it's of compassion, mm -hmm. right? Because we're all dealing with this together. We're all going through this together. And, you know, I, I tend to believe that it takes a village to get through these tragedies and to learn and grow from them. So mm -hmm. I'm reaching out to, you know, the two of you and our audience. I mean, if you have things around, how do we move through this? How do we support each other? Um, including the police, yeah. right? Um, and the families of you know, the victims of police. How do we get through this? So uh, Candace, I know you have some thoughts on this. Well, I mean, I definitely, we, we talked a little bit like, you know, the how to, right? So what comes to mind first is, um, you know, just thinking in terms of, I think Tammy mentioned earlier about, you know, 20 years ago, th these things weren't going on. And, 
And I and I think that it, what it really is is that 20 years ago, so much of this wasn't in our consciousness because we have the internet, right? So we have right. access mm -hmm. to so much more information, constant information, whether it be body cams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, body cams and everybody's got, got a camera and, you know, we just see so much more than we ever have before, right? So, you know, when we think in terms of like, as a person who is personally removed, even even though, you know, as a human, I have the human connection of being able to watch it and, and, and empathize and feel and emote, someone who's not directly affected, I think the way to sort of manage what we're what we're experiencing, because it is a trauma, even if you're not directly affected, just watching other humans go through this kind of pain is first when it when it comes to the doomsday scroll and all of the information, I think the concept is minimize consumption, maximize contribution, meaning mm -hmm. that that you want to, yes, know what's going on in the world. You want to have a sense of you know what's happening around you. But the idea is to put way more of our focus and energy into how do I contribute to something that works rather mm -hmm. than continually consuming something that doesn't work. Because it Amen. doesn't work for people to be out there getting beat to death. That does not Amen. work. Amen. Right? And, um, and, the, and the way to start with that is to always go back to the self. Like, am I generating love for self? Am I doing the things that need to be done in order to care for myself so that I can be healthy enough to care for others. And it's, I know it's the old adage of the oxygen mask, but whether it's my own children in my house, uh, my partners, my spouse, my family, in my direct community, my closest friends, am I generating enough for myself that I can then take care of others? Because it all starts with each of us individually making that choice to understand our value so that we can then value others. Mm. Mm. And so I want to once again thank you for uh, joining in to this morning with something. I'm just <laughs> we can just drop the mic on that one. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I didn't say a word. I was like, I can't follow. The show is over. Thanks so much. <laughs> There's no following that. That was definitely I know, right? a mic. Like, uh, it was definitely a mic. Yeah, what she said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what Tammy happened goes, Ditto. Was... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I was definitely like, yep, what she said. <laughs> what she said. All on the same good. page. Y'all would have said the same thing. <laughs> uh, I, I, you um, know, mm, mm, okay. go ahead, Tammy. I just, yeah. Mm. Well, obviously, there's no following that. Like, that was a mic drop. Yeah. I can uh, just, like, I'll share a personal experience. I asked uh, my daughter last night, my 16-year-old, you know, did you hear about what happened? And she said, yes. And I said, how do you feel about it? She was like the same way I feel about every, you know, person that gets killed by the police. Yeah. She said, I'm just afraid. Mm. She gets she gets her, she gets license, her license in March. In March. Yeah. And um, I said to her, like, I was like, I'll tell you what I told Shane, which is if you get pulled over for any reason, be respectful, do what they say. And if you feel like it's about to go sideways because your instinct will kick in, then like start videotaping. Yeah. But the unfortunate thing is to have that conversation in the first place. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in an effort to have a, a more tangible, um, some more tangible solutions for people that are like feeling traumatized. Yes. Um, boy, part of me wants to say like, don't watch the video. Mm. Like I haven't yeah. decided. I have not decided if I want, like, what will watching that video do for me? Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it's it's not going to do anything positive, I can tell you that. Yeah. It, it's, um, a, it's a re-traumatization. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like videotaping the worst moment of your life and watching it over again just for fun. Yeah. Right? Like, it's not. So that's the first thing I would ask people to do is, like, really sit. Look, the video is coming out tonight around yeah. 630 or 7. You have all day to decide whether or not watching that video enhances your life and supports your emotional well-being or if it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can't see a path to something positive by watching the video, then I think don't watch it because we've all seen that video before. Yeah. Like George Floyd was enough for me. That's why I'm not <laughs> sure I'm going to watch this like that. That was. A, it was enough. More than enough. And and all the other videos of uh 
I'm drawing a blank, Brian. The guy in um the Bronx who got shot like 21 oh. times coming oh, out of my, oh. Oman, something with an A. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I was like, I don't. The whole world saw that video. So that mm-hmm. anyway, that's the first thing. I, I'm not sure I'm gonna watch the video. I'm not sure any of us should watch the video. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And by the way, just from like a psychological standpoint, if we all watch that video, does that encourage other cops to do this because they get so much airtime? Wow. I mean, like we're, we're yeah. amplifying the crazy is what we're doing. Yeah. 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 And and yeah. I love that you said that, Tammy, because it really is about how we increase our consciousness, right? So the more we we feed into it and the more we like energize and, you know, I call it violence porn. It's like the more that that's what's in the consciousness. So, of course, your daughter's afraid, because when we see this, how can any of us not be afraid? Right. Because that's what we're seeing all the time. And then it sticks in our mind. And then we start to feel like that's just how it is. When in the great scheme of life, that's not just how it is. But the fact that these things are happening, you know, that's what we don't want to be happening. But that doesn't mean that you know, 99% of the time, that's what's happening. 90, 90, whatever the percentage is, what's normally happening is people get pulled over, they get a ticket or they don't, you know, but if we're in the consciousness of, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. It's like, you know, what we fear manifests. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the other piece, um, Candace, which is important is talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like let, giving, letting your feelings air out, because I think a lot of people, a lot of people aren't talking about this, which is interesting. We're talking about it today. It was I talked about I went, it with. Mm-hmm. I was just gonna say when I went to look it up, it it was way down on the. Yeah, it's kind of doesn't that speak volumes? It's buried. It's not the lead story. Like yeah. sending tanks to Ukraine is the lead story. Yeah, and oh right. by the way, another black, another you know, black guy got beat down by cops and died. Yeah. Right. So I just think, um, I I guess the second thing is like decide if you're going to watch a video. The second thing is decide, like find a way to talk about it so you're not carrying that around with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever mm-hmm. that is. Yeah. You know, you know, as I'm listening to both of you, and thank you for the words that you and thoughts that you're talking about because I completely concur with both of you. Um, I'm just remembering my parents practice and what they would tell people about their mental and emotional health. And that is, it is up to you to get the support that you need. Mm -hmm. And that that's being courageous and bold. And that if you don't take care of yourself, nobody will. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to those police officers that are out here dealing with emotional pain and psychological pain. You don't have to tell anybody about you going to get some therapy. Just go get the therapy that you need. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so hard though, Brian, for those yeah, guys. I, well, it, it is not I, like you are right making a therapy. B- b- no, believe me. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I resemble that remark. I mean, <laughs> um, luckily I had a support exactly. system that said, you know, it's okay that it's okay for you to do this and that you can do it in private. Don't tell, you don't even need to tell us that you're doing it, but just go do it. Because if you don't, it just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. And it's like a volcano Mm. where at some point that emotion is going to erupt in whatever, and you have no idea what's going to happen. It can be violent. It can be down into depression you know, it could be, you know, it could be it numbness, could, by the yeah, way. Numbness. It could, just be numb. it could create an addiction. You do not know, but handle that and understand that it is okay to do so. That it's okay to do so. And that you can start at any given moment. But the main thing is, is that you get the support and you love yourself that deeply enough that you can grow and come out of that and that the that the the grass is definitely greener on the other side Mm. um and so that's what i was kind of thinking about that you know i i think that especially men men aren't taught to get support 
they're taught to figure it out, right? And they're not taught to ask. They're not taught to, um, you know, deal with their emotions. They're not taught any of this stuff. And I'm not saying that this is an excuse, but it's just the truth. And mm -hmm. we've got to get out of what I think a lot of people call, you know, toxic masculinity because it can lead to things like what happened with Tyree Nichols. And that is people not seeing each other and it, and that it ends in this kind of experience mm. and tragedy. I, and tragedy. It's just, yeah. it's just, yeah. So it's got to end. So I just, you know, I just want to say that, that people listen, get the support that you need, you know, get the help that you need. Um, I think it's part of just being a human being and yeah. at a, at a deeper level, it's, it's also being part of just being a, a conscious creator of your life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I completely support that. And you've got some people here on the line that do that kind of thing with people. They support people in having a better life. And so, you know, just just want you to know that that this is a resource and that there's tons of resources out there for everybody mm. to to go to in mm -hmm. your in, in in your own space and in your own privacy mm -hmm. so yeah wow yeah. great show y'all that, that was a good show was, yeah you know great, yeah, great it was topic. a heavy topic it was a heavy topic yeah. i was like i don't know if i should even put that out there but i uh, no, it's, i it's love good. where we landed yeah, yeah. and absolutely. it's good, like you said, it's good to talk it out. So I think that was a great topic to choose. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, well, uh, as I mentioned before, um, we're always here to help empower people on Solivity.com. This is one way that we do it, and we have some great people here. Candice, I know that you've got uh, some uh, something that you're offering people right now. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I have my curriculum, Love Life Skills for Leaders. I do it one-on-one, -on -one, a 12 week intensive. And I have, I think, three spots open right now if anybody wants to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And if you're a Solivity listener, you you use the promo code Solivity50 when we um when you get in touch with me for the consultation. And if we choose to go forward and work together, you get half the price off wow. of the registration. Also for my and I have a, a group that I'm building right now, a club membership, which is going to be a year long membership with the same curriculum, but more time to suss it out and a community to work with. And so even for that, if you, if you choose to um, go into the group coaching, you get 50% off. So 50. Wow. You'd be crazy not to work with you. I <laughs> know, right? Listen, I'm getting, I'm getting my weekly therapy just on these uh, podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saving money. Y'all it's free. <laughs> <laughs> and Tam, we, we got some exciting oh, news God. coming to the Solivity platform. Uh, Tammy Talks is coming yeah. at you in February, February 6th. Uh, Tammy, talk a little bit about us, about this show. Yeah, I'm, it, it, I'll tell you where the history came. Um, and I know that you both have had this experience. When you gather as a family, you typically gather in the kitchen. Right. Mm. And you cook together and you eat together and you talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, so my idea is to bring everybody into the kitchen to mm. sit at the table. Hello. Um, and our conversations, though, are totally focused on your evolution, like your personal growth, your uh, raising your consciousness about yourself. The conversation that we were having today, yeah, yeah. like about emotional intelligence. Um, so, uh, generally it's about resilience, um, mm -hmm. but it's really going to be done in the context of a very casual conversation, but wow. real. So I'm excited. Y'all, no, y'all don't even know. It's going to be the bomb. It's going to be live. It's going to be live, y'all. Live, right? <laughs> <laughs> and your, and your subtitle, Tammy, is three things that I absolutely live for. Gab, gu uh, grub and growth. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Trifecta right there. So I'm I got to figure out how to do a cook. I'm open to suggest. How do I do a cooking show on a podcast? I don't know, but I'm working on it. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, what comes to mind is description. Because people right. love to, like, you know, like if you're cooking or if you've cooked something and you describe it and talk about it, yeah, that you could definitely do it. I'm, Absolutely. You need any support. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> I'm in. Oh, man. Remember, everybody, please follow us on social media and join our mailing list by visiting our This Morning Solivity site. And on behalf of all of us, I want to say thank you for joining us for another episode of This Morning with Solivity. Girls, I, I'm, I'm already like, is it over? It's over That's already. It. So oh. It's such a great way to start the day, though. I have I, a jam-packed day, but I love starting it with you both. Oh, uh, right back at you, sister. Yeah, right 100%. Back at you. Listen, everybody, we hope that you come back and join us every weekday at 8 a.m. Eastern, or you can listen to the rebroadcast of this at 11 a.m. Eastern for all of you out on the West Coast. And until next time, keep having real conversations, even the difficult ones, but with some passion and purpose and create a life full of high quality of living today. So until next time, for all of us here, just want to say bye. bye. <laughs> this work is subject to copyright owned by Affinity Global LLC. Any reproduction or republication of all or part of this is expressly prohibited unless Affinity Global LLC has explicitly granted its prior written consent, all other rights reserved.